Hi, I'm the beauty professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today, I wanted to talk about four products that I've been loving lately, and certainly they probably all deserve a special review on my blog, but in the meanwhile, I'm going to collectively mention them because I've been finding myself gravitating towards them frequently. So the first product is the Le Volume de Chanel Mascara. And this looks just like this. Very simple tube of mascara. And the brush looks like this. It's nothing cutting edge, but I will say that it reminds me most of the Eyes to Kill formula by Giorgio Armani. The brush does anyway. It's got some kind of deep spikes in it that aren't uncomfortable when you put it on your eyes, but you can kind of feel them. The bristles are something that you can feel. Now, this is intended to be a volumizing mascara. Obviously, the moniker would imply that. And I would say that my first observation regarding this mascara is that it's extremely black, it's very pigmented, and I like a deep mascara on the eyelashes. The blacker, the better. It's like uh, with Dior show, I like the blackout version because it's deeper and it's darker and it makes the original version seem like it's practically transparent. Once you get used to a deep coal on the eyes, it's really difficult to go back to a conventional mascara. This doesn't purport to be extra dark, but I find that it works that way. I have a couple coats on my eyes right now from a previous video I was filming, but I'll go ahead and add some more so you can see what the process looks like. So even there, you can tell that I have two coats here, a third coat has just been applied here, and it just keeps building. This is a very buildable mascara. I like the fact that you can add more after previous coats have dried. So this is the mascara, a close-up of what it looks like on my lashes. You can see it creates a lot of volume, decent amount of length, and a very dark lash, which I prefer, as I've already mentioned. In terms of the formula, it's a little bit on the moist side, and some people like a drier mascara because it feels easier to work with. This tends to be a little bit more liquid in texture, but I don't mind that. It does dry down fairly quickly, so if I apply a couple of coats, I might give it 20 seconds like this before I, I blink or do anything else for it to set. But then, once it sets, it's pretty much there for the day. This There's not a waterproof version yet, and I'm certain that when there is one, I'll go pick it up. But in the meanwhile, this does a great job of withstanding heat and humidity. I don't get flakiness as the day goes on or fallout. It doesn't smudge like some other mascaras which formula, whose formulas I love, but the smudging is, in, is in invariably a part of the wearing experience. For example, the Guerlain Maxim Eyes, the one in the square container the, uh, that I have covered in my blog, it's their latest release, and while the formula is beautiful and I do enjoy the brush, it does over time start smudging. You start to get dots up here where the mascara has transferred, maybe under here, and that's unfortunate because I do like the mascara overall. This has not done that for me, and I have been in some pretty extreme weather situations over the last couple of weeks, so I'm very pleased with the longevity. I'm also, as I've mentioned, pleased with the volume, the depth of the pigment, and overall, I'm really thankful that I invested in this tube of mascara, so I recommend the Chanel Le Volume Mascara. The next product that I've been loving, and this will just be a quick shout out, are the Basha Green Tea Blotting Linens. And I picked up this envelope late last year when probably I wasn't needing any kind of blotting linen, but I bought them anyway, and it was one of those Sephora in line moments of weakness. At this point, I'm thankful that I succumbed to said weakness because I'm happy I own these. The linen itself is a very thin paper, much not much unlike other blotting papers out there. This is the green tea version, and there are some like tiny, minuscule specks of green tea in the paper. I'm not certain as to their purpose, per se. But as a blotting paper goes, it's a beautiful experience. Blot, 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 
And instead of adding a whole bunch of powder over what might be a rather oily or sweaty face halfway through the day in the heat, these clean things up beautifully. Maybe then you follow up with a, with a blotting powder, but it won't look as cakey and certainly you won't need as much. I picked these up at Sephora and they come in a hundred sheet pack. So these are recommended. It's so thin that it fits in my makeup bag effortlessly. I don't even know it's there until I use them. Another product that I've been grabbing for is the Givenchy Le Prisme Visage Matte. My French is atrocious, but I'm doing my best here. This is a powder, a matte powder. I'm wearing this in number 84, which is Beige Mousseline, and it looks like the prepared for the glory. This is a gorgeous quad of powder. There is a slightly toasty brown here, a pale pearly brown or beige here, a slightly pinkish beige here, and then right here is a yellow golden beige. You mix the shades together and it creates the perfect shade of light powder for skin in the NC 25 to 27 range. It's not too yellow or orange, not too warm, and it's not too pinkish or cool. So it's great in terms of neutral skin needs. I'm using my hour Hourglass retractable foundation brush, which I use to apply most powders of choice. It's just easier that way. But I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you the rest of the compact here. So I put a little bit, I like to swirl all colors, and then I'm just gonna kind of brush slash stipple it on. The coverage is not over the top or intense. I would not, unless you've got absolutely flawless skin, and some people do, at which point, why do you wear any makeup at all? But if you have flawless skin, you might get away with this as a very light base. If not, I would not consider this like a great foundation powder. But as a finishing powder, it adds something special that traditional powders do not. You can see it's removed shine, but it has not become cakey. So there's still kind of a healthy glow about the face. And there is a satin, kind of light reflecting property in each of these quads of powder. It's a delightful compact. It's fairly small, but it has this hidden compartment here that slides right out that also houses a brush should you choose to forego an additional brush. This brush I experimented with it today. It was the first time I'd actually tried it, and it's not bad for just brushing on some powder if you're needing it to set makeup or just to touch up a shiny spot. But once again, I like using something with a little more girth when I'm applying powder. All in all, gorgeous little compact and a very surprisingly excellent powder product within here. It's, it could feel gimmicky, but the product itself is not gimmicky. It's high quality and it's wonderful. I've been grabbing it frequently this summer. Finally, and this is beginning to feel like a small homage to Givenchy, I am going to show you the Le Rouge Givenchy number 102. It's beige plume. And this lipstick is, it epitomizes luxury as far as I'm concerned. The case, let's start with the case for a second. It is encased in a very thin but authentic piece of leather. And coming from a family that really appreciates leather, my brother is a leather worker. He makes purses and other small accoutrements along the lines of handbags. We love our leather. And I love the fact that this lipstick case is leather. However, if the product inside was pure rubbish, this would not be enough to make me want to buy it. I am really pleased with the shade and the texture of this lipstick. It's a little darker than I would normally go for in the winter, but right now, and I'm, I'm wearing it, and I'll add another coat, so you can see, it's a very creamy, very opaque, peach pink nude. What else is new in my end of the world? I'll go ahead and swatch it on my wrist, a heavy swatch, and a, next to it, a single swatch. That will enable you to note the extreme creaminess and opacity. Okay, so up here, two or three passes on my wrist right here, but one pass. It's that pigmented with one pass. I love that element with regards to this lipstick. So as a color for the summer, it's a perfect peachy pink nude that still gives you some color on your face. It's not whiting you out, especially if you're getting some kind of tan. And perhaps that's why I have been gravitating towards it so frequently. 
And that concludes my discussion of four products I've been grabbing frequently this summer thus far. I hope you enjoyed the discussion and I would love to know what products have been intriguing you in the last few weeks. As always, I welcome your questions and your comments and please visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net. Take care.